Welcome to the vlog, y'all. This is our first day in Tokyo. Woke up at 5 30 in the morning both got a full eight hours of sleep because we went to bed at 9 30 woke up at 5 30 we really museum wise bag. we really did yeah i'm really happy about this it was a little rough last night you know it was a little rough powering through that last you know like four or five hours on the jet lag but i mean yeah i feel really good plan what is the plan to do now the only thing that's vaguely open at this point in time are convenience stores and the sensoji temple and kaminari on gate in uh Asakusa. so we're gonna go there i think it's somewhere between like 30 minute walk or 50 minute train ride so we'll do that go there i want to say some of the early stores around it open at eight or nine and we can probably burn a couple hours there so we'll get to eight all right well that sounds good we're gonna get dressed and get going apparently we need to go to the other side of the street so we're gonna do the little montage again also apparently i was walking in the wrong side i guess we're supposed to walk on the right side left the left side yeah, i can't believe how it smells down here. It's so clean right now in this metro station. I'm, I'm, so, I'm feeling so much better this morning than I was last night. Like, I'm, I was so tired last night, and today I just feel so excited. Falling signs. So it is 6.39 right now, and the next train comes at 6.44, so we have five minutes to wait for the train or metro or whatever you call it. The local train, bought for Asasa, is arriving. We got off the subway at Asakusa Station and it was really close to the Kaminari on gate, which means the Thunder Gate. And so we walked through that to get to Nakamise Street, which had not opened up yet. So it was just a totally quiet, empty street at that point. So we were at Sinsoji Temple. We walked through a lot of it. It is very complex and I got overwhelmed because I was so hungry. Like as soon as I get hungry, I just can't function. So we left the temple to go to this 7-Eleven to get me some breakfast. The energy needed for daily calories. It's great people who are always on the go needing an easy way of consuming energy and nutrition. I wish I knew what was in it. <laughs> There's also the giant. There's so much food in here. I got this blueberry drink and I have no idea what this is, but it looked tasty. Robert got a rice without seaweed and a rice with seaweed. Fried batter and bonito, and this is chicken, vegetables, and soy sauce. Yes. Robert's stuff had more English on it than my stuff. So we're gonna eat this and then head back to the temple. And then I got a cider. What is this? I thought this was water. No, it's cider. It looks like water. It says cider. Well, I thought it was water. I would've gotten water. It's good. I don't know what the paste is inside of it, but there's like nuts and dried fruit in it. It's pretty good. This is really good. It's yogurt with like actual pieces of blueberry in it. And it, it tastes really good. Which one is that? Bonita flake and fried batter, very tasty. I want to taste it. I tasted it. I really don't like it. I'm glad you got it and I didn't because I really don't like it at all. It's like Sprite soda. Sprite was apple flavored instead of lemon lime. That's really interesting. Okay, I have to taste it now. Yeah, it tastes like apple Sprite. That's so weird. So we are back at Sensoji Temple. Linnea finally got her calories. So now we can finally, you know, show her around. I feel like a new person. Sensoji Temple, dedicated to the Bodhisattva Canon, or the Buddha of compassion and world peace, was finally constructed in 645 AD and is one of the oldest temples of Japan and the most visited religious site in the world with over 30 million visitors annually. The primary temple is Buddhist, however, there's also a five-story pagoda that is Shinto. As this was the first temple complex we visited during our trip, I was overwhelmed by how much there was to take in. The ritual hand-washing stations were present at almost all the temple complexes we would see in Japan. Robert washed his hands and mouth as others were doing before visiting the temple. One of my favorite parts of being at this temple complex and many others we visited throughout our trip was watching how people use the incense and honored the space in their own worship. Most people wafted the incense toward themselves and walked on, but some people tried to spread the smoke all over their bodies before walking up to the temple. Growing up in the Anglican church, incense and worship are synonymous in my mind. The incense burning at temples and shrines felt familiar and comforting to me throughout our journey through religious sites in Japan. 
I enjoyed walking through the garden area off to the side of the temple, and I probably spent just as much time there as I did looking at the temple. There was a small waterfall with lots of fish swimming in the river below. I stood on the bridge and watched the fish for a while. There was a more solemn atmosphere to the garden and lots of statues and shrines to take in while walking through it. The main activity that we did near the temple and what a lot of others were doing was after they washed their hands and wafted incense, they would donate money to the temple and read a fortune. And we did that as well. We both got pretty good fortunes, so we didn't have to tie them up, which is what people do when they get a bad fortune. They tie them up on this rack near the temple. Okay, so you put the coin in, then you shake the box. Okay, pull the stick out. I don't... If you shake it right, one will come out. No, not. not hold it up and down, like maybe roll it around. Because now you have to find the matching box. So that's like 23. That yeah, looks right, Brett. That looks right to me. Okay, pull. And you uh, put the stick back. Put the stick back where? In the, in the box. What's your fortune? This is the same fortune you got. No, it isn't. Red clouds move and cover your way, and sign of being fortunate is always on your way. An arrow you shoot always gets a target. Everything you do will get quite well. Your target deer runs far away, thousands miles ahead, so you should watch the direction of your arrow. Nobody knows that a deer will run away so far. You should not have an excessive desire. Your hopes will come out to be true, but you should know about yourself. Recovering of sickness is hard. There is a tiny bit of worry about traveling. There are no worry about marriage and employment. This seems very on the nose. This is this is worse than my fortune somehow, which is a regular fortune. This is Robert's fortune. It has like, honestly, it's almost entirely positive. Your requests will be granted later. The patient will get well. Lost article will be found. The person you wait for will come. Building a new house and removal are both well. To start a trip is good. Marriage of any kind and new employment are both well. I yep. don't know how the regular fortune's better. It might be a mistranslation. But my fortunes seem more true to life. I do have a little worry about traveling. Being sick is hard. It really feels very accurate to me. All these things on here. My hopes will be true. But you should know about yourself. This is very on the nose. I lost you. I'm starting to panic. Nakamise Street is opening up now and there are so many people, so many vendors. It's completely overwhelming, but it's awesome. I cannot believe how many different types of things are being sold. It smells like bread and sweets and pastries, which is a really nice smell. Just this whole street smells that way. It's amazing. There is so much going on. I think basically everything's open now. Like these are like chocolates. I walked by these earlier. There's just like, it's so many things. Nakamise Street was a great first market for us to visit. There was so much to look at and at every turn we saw something new. Most of the vendors were selling fresh baked goods and packaged treats, but there were several clothing, home good, and trinket vendors as well. I got my first of many lemonades. Apparently fresh lemonade is big all over Japan. This is really good and they put salt in it. I'm so glad they had an option to have it with salt. It started to rain as we were ending our walk down the street, so we turned onto a different side street that was covered and had several small restaurants. You have to get it, babe. You love apple pie. Robert got a delicious apple turnover. It's more of a turnover, but it's pretty good. It's really good. I'm jealous Robert has one that I don't know. It said on the sign that it had cream cheese in it. I think it has a bunch of stuff in it. He is amusingly bad at food reviews. No matter how good the food is, he just stares into the distance with a vacant look. Like, what is this face? What is happening right now? It's a delicious dessert, and he's just making that face. After leaving the Sensoji area, we decided to head over to Kapabashi Dori or Kapabashi Kitchen Town to check out the fake food stores. On the way to fake food, Linnea saw a local grocery store, so we decided to also take a look at real food. Aside from the room temperature eggs, what struck me most about the grocery store was all the plastic packaging on the produce. The fruits and vegetables were admittedly massive, blemishless, and beautifully sorted in their plastic wrappings. But as stores steer away from plastic in America, it was strange to see it used so liberally here. While the fruit was impeccably packaged like Linnea said, I was also really impressed by the meat. I saw A4 Wagyu, and to this day, I'm not 100% sure if that is one legitimate grade below A5 or if it was just a really good marketing ploy. Okay, it does look very realistic. It even looks cold. The fake food store was entrancing, even though we saw fake food on display outside restaurants every day of our trip. Their elaborate displays and video of how the fake foods were made were the best part. 
Robert loved the giant pancake stack and the carrots relaxing in their soup hot tub. The carrots did look very chill. They sold a lot of souvenir keychains and magnets, so we picked up one for a friend here. It does look really well, especially like on camera, it does. What do you have? How is it? It doesn't taste like just grape and apple. I thought it just tasted like grape and apple, but like extra artificial. Yeah. This is a green smoothie. I was just intrigued by it, but it tastes very strange. It was raining super hard. We've been walking through pouring rain for the past 10 minutes or so. And then while we were in the convenience store, it stopped raining. So we're having our snacks in the sun. And where are we headed next, Robert? Yamaka Ginza on the other side of Ueno Park. Yeah, so that's where we're headed now. I don't know if I can finish this though. It's really rough. This is, I don't recommend this. Y'all would not believe how clean these streets are like it is amazing to be in a city like this and everything is just so clean and organized you would never have this in America so we're in Yanaka Ginza right now so right now we are in northern Tokyo at Yanaka Ginza we just had lunch and it was about a 40 minute walk to get here from the other part of Tokyo where we were at but it was a super nice walk and the longer we walked the quieter the streets got the more sort of residential areas we were going through which were super calm and the architecture was super interesting and then every few minutes we'd pass a little temple that was just a different design. Things like this are everywhere and it's just so beautiful. And there are also temples and everything everywhere wherever we walk just every so often. And it was just really a beautiful, beautiful walk. For part of the walk, it was pouring rain, but it's so warm that it didn't really matter. So I moved spots because we were around where cars were trying to go through. And I feel very like embarrassed vlogging here for some reason. So I feel just embarrassed just selfie filming myself. I feel kind of weird. I don't know why. But the place where we had lunch was really yummy and now we are walking just through all these little shops and bakeries and it, the streets here are just so 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 much more quiet than they were in the other part of Tokyo where we were at. It just feels so calm. There's like gentle music playing. It's very very interesting and we're having a good time. They have Coke Zero Studio. There's not a recycling can here. That's gonna be a problem once you drink it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm willing to. There's more can recycling than there is non can recycling. There's almost no trash cans, but you can recycle things frequently. How is it? It's good. The taste is different than the American Coke Zero. So, right now we're on this even quieter street behind the street that we were just on that had all the shopping and stuff. And it's just, I'm falling in love with Tokyo, y'all. This is so different from when we were walking around last night near our hotel. It's such a different experience. We're about to have to get a train to go where again? Uh, just places around the Imperial Palace. So we're about to have to wrap things up here, unfortunately, and get on a train and go somewhere else. So we did learn something today when we were at lunch, just about the way that things work here. We made a bit of a faux pas, which I'm still feeling a little embarrassed about, but I'm trying to get over it. As y'all know, if you watch the vlog, I mostly do well with liquids. Obviously, I had that little pastry with the red bean paste and the nuts in it this morning, and that was really, really good. But that's the only solid food that I've been able to tolerate today with all the heat I've been pretty nauseous what are you looking at the pay sign <laughs> given that when we went to get lunch Robert wanted to eat this savory bowl that had meat and vegetables in it and he said it was super good and I believe him. I didn't taste it but it was really good but I knew that like I was not gonna be able to tolerate that so Robert ordered that so this is the metro station we need to be at alrighty I wanted to finish the story about what happened at lunch. We got caught up, like I was telling the story, then we had to get on the metro and go to those places. But anyway, what happened at lunch? So Robert ordered his thing. The waitress realized that we were only ordering like one lunch meal. She was definitely perturbed and she said that we couldn't share and that I had to order something. So I did, I ordered this hot tea. It was labeled honey flavored black tea, but there definitely wasn't any honey in it. It was just like a Swedish, black, a sweet tasting 
amazing black tea and it was really good and I enjoyed the tea but it was definitely embarrassing like not to know that that was a requirement I think it, it really has to do with the fact that the restaurants are so small there is such limited seating space and so if you're a human being taking up seating space you have to order something and have patronage to the restaurant so I get it but it was just embarrassing I'm glad that we know that now though because we're gonna probably get into a lot of situations where Robert is going to be able to actually have a meal and I won't just because of the situation with my stomach and the fact that I can only have small portions mostly liquids throughout the day I can't really have proper meals so we're just gonna have to wherever we go I'll just have to order a dessert which is usually small that I can eat or some sort of tea or beverage or something I did end up eating Robert's soy pudding because he didn't like it and we didn't want to waste it and I was like okay if I'm eating this to not waste it then it's fine so I, I had my tea I had my own thing and then I had Robert's um, pudding it tasted like a very lightly sweet silken tofu that had a little bit of black tea with it and it was so good I love that the desserts here are so different from what we have in America and I love that they're not too sweet so that's my story of our faux pas it really wasn't an issue last night because last night even though I couldn't eat very much dinner Robert and I still ordered the same entree and I just had a few bites of mine I felt very guilty for wasting it which is why at lunch I was not gonna order anything but anyway we're figuring it out gastroparesis makes things interesting of course we are now in Chiyoda near the Imperial Palace and the sound of the cicadas is deafening completely deafening Yasukuni Shrine and the Yushikan Military History Museum are some of the most politically controversial locations in all of Japan and visiting them felt completely different than visiting any other religious site in the rest of the country. Immediately upon entering, you are greeted by armed security with signs emphasizing that vandalism and protesting are illegal. Yasuguni Shrine was founded by Emperor Meiji in 1869 to memorialize all who died in military service to the Empire, from the Meiji's restoration to the end of the Great Pacific War that Americans know as World War II. In total, 2,466,532 people are enshrined, and this number includes 1,068 war criminals, hence why this shrine is so reviled by Chinese and Korean people living in Japan. Additionally, photography and videography, which were generally allowed everywhere, were also banned past the Tori Gate and within the museum. The museum presented a distinct view of World War II with some significant historical revisionism. So next thing I'm eating today is this orange drink. I didn't want to get just water because I do feel like my blood sugar is a little low and I need some hydration, so that is what we're doing. This is really good, but it definitely has mango in it. So I'm not sure what to do now. It's really good. I have Benadryl in my purse. I don't feel like I'm reacting to it yet. I think I'm gonna drink it and see what happens and if I need to take a Benadryl, I'll take a Benadryl, but this is really good. I'm drinking so where we've walked to now is Jimbocho Booktown and it's basically this whole street that is full of bookstores and it's pretty cool. It's kind of hard to appreciate it as much as we might want to because obviously all the books are not in English but it's still cool and so yeah we're just taking this in and then we're heading to another temple after this which we have to get on a, a metro to get there so that's the plan. It is about 3.30 I think right now. Jimbocho Booktown was admittedly a strange choice for this trip. Allegedly, there's seven bookstores containing Yosho, or foreign books, in English. However, we didn't really have the time or the bandwidth or the capacity to find those in the heat. At this point, I was kind of wondering if Linnea's goal to see off the beaten path residential things was not worth it and whether or not we should have gone to Team Lab Planets. Zojoji Temple highlights how modern and ancient Tokyo seamlessly blend together. The temple was initially completed by a disciple of the Kobo Daishi, one of the most significant Buddhas of Japan, in the year 1393, it once contained 120 buildings. The vast majority of the temple complex burnt down during World War II, excluding the main gate, which was built in 1622, and is now the oldest surviving wooden structure in Tokyo. Today, it is surrounded by the modern buildings of the Minato Ward, including the famous Tokyo Tower. So we are here at the Zozoji Temple, and as soon as I saw it, I knew why Robert wanted to take us here. It is so breathtaking and it's amazing to see all of this juxtaposed against all of these kind of industrial buildings behind us it just sort of seems to sum up tokyo in a way like all the beautiful traditional architecture and the industrial kind of part as well it's just really really cool and it's so beautiful yeah this day has just been so fun so far and there's still so much we're gonna do tonight so I'm just loving our first full day in Tokyo. It is so different from our first night in Tokyo where we just were on that one street. Like, I'm just realizing the more time we spend here just how much there is to see and how different so many different parts of Tokyo are. We're only here for a couple days but I, I already know that we're not even gonna do an eighth of the things there are to do in Tokyo but this is so cool. The main hall of Zojoji was where we had our first significant encounter with Buddhism. There was a Buddhist ceremony going on with the monks and priests reciting mantras 
for meditation. While we didn't understand it, we would eventually get more insight into Japanese Buddhism when we stayed at a temple on Mount Koya later in the trip. Next to the temple, there was a cemetery with hundreds of Jizo statues. Jizo is the guardian deity of travelers and children in Japan. In many cemeteries, you will find Jizo statues wearing red caps and aprons, which are erected in memory of children who have passed away and miscarried babies. Mourning parents hope that their spirits will protect other children in the world. We stayed at the temple until the buildings closed and a monk rang the ceremonial bell indicating that the temple was closing for the evening. So we have just left the temple and Tokyo Tower and now we are walking through these fairly quiet streets over to Rapungi Hills where there is gonna be food, shopping, and art. And we're no longer stressed about time because thankfully the temple was the last thing that like closed early in the day around five. So the rest of this is all evening stuff. And we're excited and Robert and I are both pretty hungry. So we're ready for food. We seem to have ended up somewhere with a lot of expensive stores, a lot of non-Japanese food, and we're not sure if we want to go up to the observatory or the art museum because there's a long line and admission is pretty pricey. So this may not have been the best call, but we're going to find some food and maybe we'll feel better after that. I thought it was funny to eat Italian food for dinner our first full day in Tokyo, but Italian restaurants in Japan are not only freaking delicious, but much more ubiquitous when we realized. We saw Italian restaurants in almost every city we went to in Japan, all the major cities at least. We ordered two entrees and we shared them both. We got margarita pizza, which was delicious, although the tomato sauce was a bit too sweet. Our favorite was this cheesy eggplant tomato pasta that I ate too much of, but it was totally, totally worth the nausea later. One of the best pastas I've ever had. A lot of Japanese buildings and entertainment complexes have this incredible amount of verticality to them, and they're kind of labyrinthian. I did not expect to ride so many escalators in Japan. And sometimes we even found ourselves in buildings where we had to take seven escalators to get up and down the building because it was unclear where the elevators were. Whoa, this is kind of pretty. Tokyo at night. We can buy tickets to one of the observatories in town, but I do should sky I do here or there's also the Tokyo Metropolitan building where you can see the view for free. Tokyo at night is like prettier than I expected. Look the the tower is actually light up lit up now. Oh geez is that boring tower as you put it. Okay the tower seemed boring when it wasn't lit up and now that it's lit up it doesn't seem as boring. Oh, you mean when it was washed out by all the sunlight? Oh wow oh my so we are walking away from the restaurant and where were where was the restaurant at? There are pungy hills. There's stairs coming up. Oh no, there are stairs, Robert says. So I can't talk about the food yet because there's stairs. He doesn't want me to fall down the stairs, which is very wise of him. So this is the building we were just at and the observatory is on the top floor. And that is what we did not buy tickets for. We thought about it and then we didn't. Tomorrow. Well, dang, that would have been cool. We can come back tomorrow. We can buy tickets. Tokyo at night is a whole different experience when you see it like this. So we're definitely going to end up at an observatory at some point while we're in Tokyo, just not tonight. Robert is extremely tired from all the walking. I'm extremely tired from all the walking. And on top of that, Robert's phone is about to die and his is the only phone that we have a SIM card in. My phone's just basically been in airplane mode unless I've been connecting to Wi-Fi. So Robert's phone is the way we get around and it is at 4%. So we definitely need to go back to the hotel and charge it. And then 8%. we're gonna do, oh, it's at 8%, percent <laughs> No, it's at 3%, oh my God. We definitely need to go back to the hotel and charge his phone and then probably head out out and do a little stuff before we go to bed, like more nightlife type stuff. That Italian restaurant though, guys, was amazing. And for the quality that it was and how affordable it was, it is way better than anything you could get for that price in America, way better. It was so good. Robert's phone finally died. So now we're just on the look for Rapungi Station without Google Maps to help us. And the stations are actually kind of hard to find, like to be honest. You kind of have to know where they are, so wish us luck. It's over there. It's either this one or the one across the street. 
We made it. Despite not having Robert's phone, we made it. Is that the train? So are you hydrating, babe? Yes. So we've learned from today that Robert needs to drink at least double the water he's been drinking. He has like barely peed all day. He's been sweating like crazy and he feels very delirious. So I'm really worried about him. You need to drink that whole water, then we need to get you more water. He's not all right. I got us home. You did, with no phone. We did good. It's like 8.30 right now. We've been back at the hotel for a little bit. You you take pause from your water drinking and I'm it's like it's bothering me. Like you need to finish that bottle, you need to drink more. I'm really concerned about you. Dinner, like I said, was amazing and the portions were small. So that was a really good for me. The There wasn't a whole lot of oil on the food. That was also good for me. And even though I was nauseous after we ate, it's been like an hour or so after we ate, maybe like an hour and a half since we ate and I'm not feeling too nauseous now, which is really really good. Although I should probably hydrate as well. Didn't you say there was like a low alcohol, no alcohol bar around here? Yeah. So if Robert rallies, there is a bar that I kind of have my eye on going to because it is a low slash no alcohol bar. So it's basically like all mocktails and low alcohol cocktails. And that just seems super interesting to me. Wanted to do something like that's not focus on alcohol. It's been an awesome day. I cannot believe how much we've done. I'm so glad we came here. Everyone that we've met has been really nice. And even when we've done something that we didn't post to do accidentally like with the whole almost not ordering something for me at that restaurant at lunch and then just like little tiny faux pas that not like that memorable just like little things like well like you almost brought your wet umbrella into that shop oh, and yeah. that was kind of embarrassing too because you guys put your umbrellas outside all the time or put a cover on it so that's a whole thing too and robert accidentally almost brought his wet umbrella into a shop and the guy was like getting nervous and but it, we figured it out it was okay i don't know i just feel like very aware of myself here just like not wanting to mess up not be too loud just very self aware because I feel like there's so many rules and everyone just acts so carefully here and I love that but I just I'm so worried I'm not gonna like know a rule and mess up and embarrass myself but so far I think we're doing moderately well. <laughs> I see that you've made very little progress on water bottle number two. Okay he's chugging it now he's really rallying. He really wants to go to the no slash low alcohol bar. It is a 16 minute walk from here and 16 minutes shouldn't be too far to walk. Both of our feet are sore and our whole bodies are sore and it's day one of the vacation. So hopefully we can just like pull through. I I did want to say one more thought about like the temples though. I think the part of going to the temples that I enjoyed the most was just seeing everyone interact with them and go through like their own worship and have their religious experiences. Bowing and praying and using the incense. I think religion is so powerful and so personal and I just thought it was really interesting and beautiful to see the way that you know people of another religion and another culture experience their religion and their connection with what they believe in and so i just really really enjoyed that so we are out on the streets of tokyo we're in akihabara and we're headed to that low alcohol bar the streets are a lot less crowded than they were on sunday night so it just feels so nice honestly i'm having a totally different experience of nighttime in tokyo than i was last night i think i was just so delirious from the travel last night that i just like couldn't comprehend what was happening but the air is warm it's just so beautiful Beautiful to see everything lit up. It is awesome. So we're back out on the street. That bar was amazing. There were things, every single cocktail was something I never would have thought about. And so different from the mocktails that we get in America where it's syrupy and basically regular cocktails without any alcohol in it. These were all just like new different variations and things I'd never thought about. We both started out with citrusy cocktails and then I wanted to have one more drink. So I had the wasabi orange chocolate mocktail and it was quite serious. Seriously, one of the best things I've ever consumed. It somehow was like a hot chocolate, but it was cold and it was frothy and the wasabi was at like the perfect amount of spice. And the bartender told me when he put it down, he said, if it's too spicy, tell me and I will fix it. And it was not too spicy. It was perfect. And I told him like, this is amazing. It was such a good experience. It felt like going to a bar and drinking alcohol, but I don't feel terrible. I feel great. And it was awesome. So 10 out of 10 would totally go again. I'm so, so glad we went. Come over. This is weird. What are you doing? I don't want to go back to the town. What is this? It's a shrine. It's what? I don't know. It's just a shrine. I told y'all there are like shrines and temples everywhere. Is that what you're trying to prove? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to prove. 
Okay. Alrighty, so we are back at the hotel. We have both taken showers, so we feel refreshed, ready to sleep. It's a little later than we had intended to stay up. It is 11.30, so we need to get to bed because we're waking up at 6.30 in the morning tomorrow, so we need to get that sleep. It's just so hard to go to bed when there's so much to do and so little time it feels to get it all in because we're going to so many different parts of Japan on this trip. But anyway, we are hydrating. So Robert is hydrating. I'm hydrating, so hopefully we won't feel bad in the morning. Thankfully, there's no alcohol to make things worse with, in terms of hydration. So that was awesome. And we need to get to bed so we can have another big day tomorrow. Talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.